What is going on everybody? Welcome to the 15th Python with NLTK for Natural Language Processing tutorial video. In this video I'm going to be showing you guys how we can marry the NLTK module with the scikit-learn module. So the NLTK module is what it is. It's a natural language toolkit. It's not a machine learning toolkit by any means, but scikit-learn is. So uh, with built into NLTK, even though NLTK does have its own naive Bayes algorithm, so does scikit-learn. Scikit-learn also has support vector machines. It's got its own classes of naive Bayes and many different versions of the naive Bayes algorithm. It's got um, you know, linear regression, it's got a bunch of other stuff that we, we can actually use, like uh, we'll also use stochastic gradient descent for example. So anyways, that's what I'm going to be showing you guys today is how to make use of all of these other algorithms that are, are available via the scikit-learn module. Now you will need the scikit-learn module, so if you don't have that you can, uh, I have a tutorial on it, otherwise you could just, do, you should be able to get it by with just pip install sklearn or scikit-learn, I forget which one, it's probably in this tutorial though. Um, so if you go to Python program and just go to start learning data analysis machine learning and go to the second tutorial here and this is just an example of using it um, yeah you see these would be all the things that you would need for scikit-learn so that's going to be numpy scipy matplotlib and scikit-learn should be able to go and use pip to install all of these if you don't know how to use pip then again start learning control F for pip Come on down here, and here's the tutorial on installing things with pip. Now, uh, that's that. So once you have scikit-learn, now you're ready to marry these. So if you have any problems installing and stuff scikit-learn, you can either post here or post on the scikit-learn installation tutorials. Otherwise, we're going to go ahead and move on. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to have the um, NLTK library, so to speak, of uh, what we need to marry these things. So we're going to go uh, from nltk.classify.scikit-learn import uh, s k learn uh, capital C classifier okay so this is part of the NLTK module okay um, but it, it's basically a wrapper to include the scikit-learn um, algorithms within the NLTK classifier itself so we can do the same things that we've done down here where we basically say you know nltk.classify.accuracy and we can pass any classifier through here uh, including the scikit-learn classifiers so let's go ahead and import a bunch of some scikit-learn uh, classifiers we'll do the na naive Bayes ones first so from sklearn.naive underscore Bayes we're going to import uh, let's do multinomial uh, naive base. Now multinomial, that just means it's a multinomial distribution, so it's not a binary distribution uh, of data. So this could be many categories. Uh, so this one may or may not be very accurate. This one will probably be a pretty volatile one. Uh, then we've got uh, Gaussian naive base, and then we'll take in uh, the Bernoulli naive base. Uh, feel free to Google any of these that we go through. I will just basically uh, explain them but if you want to know more about each individual one eventually I plan to go through scikit-learn and just knock out all of the algorithms because it's useful to know which one is going to be good in various circumstances also every single scikit-learn algorithm comes paired with a bunch of parameters you can use the default parameters these are general parameters that are pretty good but it's good to know what the parameters are and how adjusting them will change uh, your success uh, so keep that in mind that despite the success that we get with these whether it's good or bad you can probably improve that success by at least 10 percent by uh, correctly choosing and not using the default parameters and scikit-learn also actually does have something built in to help you automatically choose your parameters but this is not a scikit-learn tutorial this is a NLTK tutorial so if you want to learn more about scikit-learn I do have basic tutorial on scikit-learn I just showed you how to get there to do the installation check that out if you'd like uh, also like I said eventually I'll do a tutorial basically on every single algorithm from scikit-learn uh, and that should be pretty helpful Anyways, we'll be using the defaults. <laughs> so let's grab that, and then uh, how do we actually use these? So we've got multinomial, Gaussian, and Bernoulli. Well, it turns out it's actually pretty simple to kind of bring these all together. So let's do, um, let's just scroll down to the bottom here. 
And you can see where, um, well, this is kind of like the old stuff that we've used. We'll get rid of this. We'll leave this one here just because um, we'll call this original, naive Bayes algo accuracy percent. And then now how might we incorporate some others? So let's say we want to use the multinomial, bin, or yeah, multinomial naive Bayes, <laughs> multinomial Bernoulli, no. <laughs> and then we'll do underscore classifier. Uh, that's going to equal the SK learn uh, classifier, and we're going to use the multinomial NB uh, class here. Okay, so that creates now we've got our classifier, and now we can do the exact same thing as as we did before. So um, let's see. Well, we're, we're using we were in the, okay, so we've changed our code a little bit, but here's the original code I commented it out. So this is the code for NLTK classifier training. It's just classifier equals, and then uh, well, first we had to define the classifier, but then uh, but what we can do now is we can train this with just dot train because now it's an NLTK classifier. So this is how we converted it to its NLTK classifiers with this sklearn classifier uh, wrapper around around it. So now we can do something like this. We can say nmnb. So we'll just copy that, paste dot train. What do we want to train it against? Well, the training set. So copy paste that in, and then we can do the exact same thing basically right here. Let's just copy paste this line. Let's of course edit this, and we'll just say actually let's leave most of that. We'll just copy this and then replace this with that. And then instead of classifier, we're using this classifier now, the MNB classifier. And then we test it against the testing set. Everything else stays exactly the same. So then we had a few more, right? We've got multinomial, Gaussian, and Bernoulli. So let's just let me just copy that. Come on down here, paste, and let's highlight this. Copy, paste, paste. And now we're gonna do. Um, let's just. Do this, copy, paste, and then for Bernoulli, copy, paste, we'll do this, copy, paste, and then this is Gaussian NB, paste, for the classifier, so Gaussian NB. So this one's almost done, let's take this, paste, okay, so Gaussian NB classifier equals SK learn classifier, Gaussian NB, good, good, good. Bernoulli NB classifier, copy that, paste, paste here, and then here, paste, but get rid of the classifier part. And that should be it. Uh, training set and maybe, oh, well, we need to do this. Let's copy, paste, copy, and paste. Okay, so now we can train against basically all of these. Let's go ahead and save and run that and make sure we're, we're uh, where we want to be without any errors before we continue on. Um, while we wait for that, actually, what we can do, um, okay, so the original naive base, 62%. Um, what we can do is while we're waiting on that, let's go up here. And now what we can do, let's do uh, from sklearn uh, dot linear underscore model. Let's import logistic progression and the sg stochastic gradient descent <laughs> classifier. There we go classifier good so we'll get those two and then also let's do from sklearn dot svm for support vector machines import uh, svc just a support vector classifier the linear svc and then new svc linear is just linear svc new is so you can specify the number of um, support vectors uh, so then uh, so these are just like a bunch of algorithms and I'm, I'm not wasting your time just showing you a bunch of new and extra algorithms um, here we got an error here uh, sparse matrix. which one was that on? I was on uh, let's see we had that error on MMB we'll comment out Gaussian for now let's not use Gaussian um, We'll come back to that. I'm pretty sure maybe that doesn't work with the SK Learn classifier conversion. So we'll comment that out for now. Uh, let's keep this, let's just run it again and make sure the other one doesn't have an error. But MNB, you can see it actually did better 
in the 62, but you should know by now that this number was so volatile as anything from 59 to 89 in our current tutorials. So you should know that 75 may or may not be uh, reliable. Anyway, as I was saying uh, before, let's see if we can make it through here. Um, I'm showing you all these algorithms because we're going to actually use most of these, and then we'll use a voting system uh, to vote. Uh, so each one is classifying something as positive or negative, but what we can do is if we have, let's say, five or six or seven algorithms, we can make it a vote. We can say, okay, how, how, what do the most algorithms say about this sample? And so one that should raise up to basically the mean of the most accurate, um, uh, most accurate ones. We'll toss out some of them that are clearly inaccurate. Uh, so it'll do that, but it also will create reliability for us. And as you know and have seen, that's important. So uh, anyway, so we've got linear SVC, new SVC. That's good. So now we have all of these. And so I'm just going to copy this because I'll forget otherwise. And we'll come down here. Let me just paste them. And so we want basically all of these. So let's just comment that out. And then we'll go copy. And then was that five more? One, two, three, four, five. OK, so now we'll do logistic regression classifier. Paste, paste paste, paste, and then uh, paste. Logistic regression classifier, good. Uh, so we've done that, now SGDC classifier, copy that, paste, 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 and paste. Um, Eventually, you might want to actually just use a for loop if you had enough classifiers. Anyway, we're already too deep, guys. Paste, 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 and paste. Hopefully, I'm not missing one. That would suck. Uh, what was the next one? Let's see. Linear SVC next. So, linear SVC, linear SVC, paste, paste, and paste. And I think the last one is our new SVC. Yes, sir. So again, all of these have their own parameters. So it's really important that you understand that we're using defaults right now. So for example, new SVC, you could specify uh, you know, the new. So the number of support vectors, and I think the default is 0 0.5. Uh, but you, there's a lot of parameters. Most of these have like 10 parameters. Uh, so you can really customize these quite heavily. So keep that in mind. Um, and check them out if you want to go in advance. Like I said, I will eventually have tutorials on each one but I don't right now, but you can go to the scikit-learn documentation and hopefully find them. So one click, quick look over before I start running this. SVC, good, 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 good. Everything's looking good, logical. Okay, let's just run it, see what happens. <sighs> right, let's put this up. So as we're waiting, again, what we're going to end up doing after this is we'll have basically a list of accuracy. So our initial accuracy here is 58%, pretty bad. But as we go down the list here of accuracies, so NM MNB, uh, we got 65%. We'll keep going here. Um, and what we can do is take a vote on each single one. So the next video, what we're going to be talking about is how we're going to actually build uh, a class that will take each classifier and it will basically make these classifiers each one what you will need to have an odd number of classifiers you could do an even and have some handling for that uh, but we'll just purposely use an odd one so whichever classification positive or negative gets the most votes that's what our new classifier we're gonna call it like vote classifier that's what our new classifier will say the answer is so um, so that should give us one, a slightly higher accuracy because we'll probably throw out the ones that we're finding to be rather inaccurate or unuseful here. So uh, support vector machines, at least a basic support vector classifier is basically useless. Um, this number is going to be pretty reliably low. It'll be lower than 50% most of the time or often. So we found, we'll find that that's this one we're just going to toss out anyways. But of all of these other ones, basically, we'll be able to take a vote and see which one gets the most votes. And this will create a reliability in our accuracy. So we'll actually have some reliability. But not only that, we can also create a kind of like that objectivity score from the uh, Senti word net, if you looked in that. Uh, but generally, when you have a sentiment analysis algorithm, you've got, you know, 
or any sort of text classification, you're going to have two factors. You're going to have the, the ending score, and then you'll have another thing that is like the uh, certainty of that score. So if, if, if we have, let's say we've got seven algorithms, and six out of seven algorithms say it's positive, well, that's a pretty confident score. So, uh, so that would be a, a relatively uh, reliable score. But what if three out of four said it was negative and four, or I'm sorry, three out of seven said it was negative and four out of seven said it was positive. Well, that's a little less reliable. We're a little less confident. So you can generate a confidency score as well. So anyways, that's that. So we ran through all these classifiers. We can say, see that actually quite a few of them did better than our original classifier in this round at least. We got, you know, 65, 65, 70, 71, 69. So when we average these, we should find that we get you know upper 60s. And we're obviously going to toss out the the basic SVC. But again, this is with the default parameters. So I encourage you, uh, if this is the path you want to take, to maybe start tweaking some of these things. Um, again, this is in a Scikit Learn tutorial series. It would take a really long time to talk about each one of these, so I'm not going to do that. Um, but if you find that you want to dig in deeper, I highly suggest you do. So anyways, uh, that's what you have to look forward to is a voting system basically so we can get some reliability and a slightly higher score, uh, but also we can get some confidence out of this. So that's what you guys have to look forward to. If you have any questions or comments up to this point, please feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and subscriptions, and until next time.